My name is Simon Peter. One day, my partners and I were out cleaning our nets after a long, hard night of fishing. We were tired and discouraged and had nothing to show for our efforts, not even a single fish. Jesus was teaching on the hillside as usual, and people were there from everywhere to hear his single words that he would share about the kingdom of God. He came up to me and asked if he could teach from my boat, and I rowed him out a little bit so his voice would carry. After he was done teaching, he asked if I would row out a little farther and put my net out to try to catch some more fish. I told him it was pointless. We had been out all night and had caught nothing. But I did as he asked. And then, something miraculous happened. So astonishing, there were so many fish. There were so many fish that our nets began to break. So many fish that the boats even began to sink because of the weight of them. I fell down on my knees feeling so sinful and faithless in his holy presence. And he took me by the hand and he said, Peter, you're not going to be catching fish anymore, but I'm going to make you a fisher of men. I didn't understand what Jesus meant at first, but I decided to, to leave the fishing business behind my boat, my nets, and follow Jesus. And I've never looked back. He's taught me what it means to be on a mission for the kingdom of God and, and to tell people about the coming Messiah. And now, tonight, Jesus tells us that one of the twelve, one of his faithful disciples, are going to betray him. I vainly promised that I would follow him even to death. But he looked at my eyes and he said, Peter, before the morning comes and the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. Deny him? A am I not the rock that he called me to be? How, how could I betray my Lord and my friend? Master, is it I? I've been known as Peter's little brother, Andrew, since the day I was born. Years ago, I left the fishing business to follow that fiery preacher, John the Baptizer. He was anointed by God to prepare the way for the coming Messiah. And now I follow him. I love to bring people to Jesus. I brought my brother to Jesus. And I've watched him grow and become a strong leader among us. I brought the little boy with the five loaves and two fish to Jesus. I have even brought Gentiles to the Master, for he is loving and open to anyone who is willing to hear the truth. <clears throat> but Jesus has enemies in high places, enemies who would love to silence him or even see him die. And he speaks of a betrayer among us. Among these twelve, Oh, please, let it not be I who brings sorrow to my Lord. Jesus, is it I? My name is James. John is my younger brother. We worked with Peter and Andrew in the fishing industry. Jesus called us to follow him the same day he called Peter, and we did, thinking that he would establish his kingdom on earth and we would be his right-hand men. Jesus calls us the sons of thunder, but actually, we're the sons of Zebedee, a rich and powerful man in the community who is personal friends with some of the more influential religious leaders. I had hoped at one time this would assure me of a position of power in the new kingdom. My mother even suggested that I should sit at Jesus' right hand when he claimed his throne, and John at his left. After all, we were invited to the mountain with Jesus. We saw him transfigured. 
His face shone like the sun, and the voice of God spoke from heaven. He chose me. He chose each of us. How could one of us betray him? We have seen his perfect adherence to the law. We have heard the voice of God say, this is my son. We have been present at countless miracles, healings, works no mere man could accomplish. Could it be my brother John? Could it be me? Is it I? James the Less. I'm known by that name, peculiar as it is, because of my stature and also because it differentiates me from all the other men by that name, James. Well, since I joined that group of brothers known as the disciples, the followers of, of this one Jesus, I have seen the most amazing, miraculous things. I've seen this Jesus calm the sea. Even the wind and the rain obey his voice. Oh, but Jesus also ha has the power over demons. He has removed evil spirits, cast them out, and he's given to all of us this amazing ability to also cast out demons in his name. He has the power over all sorts of illnesses. He has, I've seen him do this, taking people that were debilitated by disease, illnesses, for years, even, even if you will, from birth, 
and he's healed them. Oh, but that isn't all. This Jesus has the ability to forgive sin. And now, and now tonight, as we sit here at this table, and these men who have followed him and are now eating and drinking with him tonight, he says that one of them, one of us, will betray him. How could this be? He is our, our Lord. He is our Messiah. How, how could any of us deny him? We have seen his work, the miracles. He has fulfilled prophecies, one after the other. He has also taken and, and just demonstrated who he is by his word, his teaching, but also proof after proof with those miracles. He's even called all of us to follow him. Who could turn away? Who could turn away from him? Lord? Is it I? His hands, carpenter hands, rough, weathered hands, and yet so gentle and loving. His hands reached out and touched a leper, and the disease was erased from his body. His hands reached out and touched Peter's mother-in-law, and her fever disappeared. His hands reached out and lifted Jairus' daughter from her deathbed. His hands opened the ears of the deaf and the eyes of the blind and mended the bones of the lame. Countless infirmities, illnesses, deformities, gone. His hands reached out, blessing little children when others would have turned him aside. His hands reached out, rescuing Peter from a churning sea that would have swallowed him. His hands, blessing and breaking bread, folding in prayer. Such simple gestures, yet so profound. Those hands that have shown mercy and kindness, given love and healing, those hands that have served me, Thaddeus, and my brothers. Those hands that have worshipped the Lord. They are the hands of God in this very room. All of us have received blessings from his hands. All of us have seen the miracles those hands have performed. Who could betray those hands into the hands of an enemy? Will I, Thaddeus, betray him? Is it I? My name is Philip. Jesus came to me one day when I was working and said simply, follow me. I spent an entire day with him and I was convinced this is truly the promised one. It's taken me some time to realize, to understand that this man, this fulfilled promise, is actually God here among us. Recently, thousands of men and women, families with children, were sitting on a hillside listening to him preach, listening to him teach us. Jesus asked me where we could buy some bread to feed them all. Admit, at once I thought only of the actual physical cost of such a venture. Our treasury simply does not hold such funds. I regret I, I gave no thought to the people's discomfort or to the possibility even of a divine miracle. But Jesus, oh, Jesus took five small loaves of bread 
two tiny fish. He prayed over them, broke them into pieces. We fed thousands. And after they were done eating and fulfilled, we still collected 12 baskets full of leftovers. God, here among us, who would deny this promised one, this divine presence here in our midst? And to whom would this person deliver him? Our Jesus. To whom? To the vain and arrogant priests who refuse to believe God has kept his promise? Or to the pagan Roman government that fears a rival ruler? Could any one of us, any one of us, forget his power, his compassion? Could I forget? Lord, is it I? Bartholomew to some and Nathaniel to others. I've been a diligent student of the scriptures for a long, long time, and I'm a, dis I'm a disciple of John the Baptizer. My friend Philip told me about this Jesus of Nazareth. At first I was skeptical. Jesus of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? But John said to me, he said that Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. That caused me to ponder. Then I met this Jesus of Nazareth. He seemed to know me already. He knew my innermost thoughts. Although I've been a devout man, Jesus was offering something more personal, more intimate than my religion ever offered before. We've been celebrating the Feast of Passover now for over a thousand years remembering our slavery in Egypt with the uh, bitter, bitter herbs, remembering also the uh, 10 plagues with the 10 drops from the goblet, remembering how the blood of the sacrificed lamb caused the angel of death to pass over the Israelites and spare their firstborn. Remembering how God set his people free.
that wonderful, wonderful story. And then they fled Egypt with no time to cook leavened bread. So they baked unleavened bread in the warmth of the sun. In the warmth of the sun. Now Jesus breaks this unleavened bread also. And he says, this is my body. He drinks, he shares the cup, and he says, this is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. I don't understand. How could I, how could I betray my friend? Lord, is it I? My name is Simon, and before Jesus called me, I was a member of the Zealots. We believe that God and God alone rules over this holy nation. And we refuse to pay homage or taxes to any Roman governor. But Jesus teaches that God ordains all powers and governments on earth, allowing them to rule over us. And we must give them their due and treat them with respect. Since following the Christ, I have tried to channel my zeal into telling others about Jesus and leading them to his kingdom. Is there a spy among us? A Roman, perhaps? How could any follower of Jesus question his power and authority? He is God. He is our king. Could I somehow revert to my old ways? Could I, Simon, betray my king? Lord, is it I? I am Matthew, and before I became a disciple of Jesus, I worked for the Roman government collecting taxes. I used to take advantage of some of the perks of the profession and skimmed a little off the top for personal use. Maybe more than just a little. But listening to Jesus, I realized that I have sinned against my neighbor. I cheated them. I, I became wealthy, but by stealing their hard-earned money and their goods. Instead of seeking eternal treasure, I was focused on earthly treasure. But my heart has changed because of Jesus. I even invited all the tax collectors I could to my house, and we held a huge feast. And I was hoping that maybe if they met Jesus, they could be changed even as I was. But now that they, they speak of a traitor among us, will the others suspect me? The cheating tax collector? Lord, is it I? i 
I am John, the beloved disciple, beloved, loved by Jesus, loved by the one who in the beginning was with God, loved by the one who is greater than all of us, and yet he washes our feet. The symbol of, of servitude and humility. You might think that because Jesus called me his beloved, that it would give me reason to be proud. Oh, how I have learned that is the true, the opposite is true. I once thought that I might hold a place in his kingdom of power and prestige. But he has shown me over and over again that the war he wages is a spiritual battle. He does not seek the rich and powerful. He reaches out to the needy, the paupers. He dines in the homes of sinners. And he, he 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 does not dine with the elite. I've seen him equally befriend a Pharisee, well-known Pharisee, and a woman who is immoral, forgiving them both. God has sent his son because he loved the world, the lowly, me, so much 
so much that he does not want any of us to perish. This Jesus, he is the way, the truth. He is life. Even though we are his closest followers and friends, I don't believe we fully understand or fathom the depth of his love. I know that he would give his life for me. He would give his life for me. How could I not do the same for him? Will my pride cause me to stumble? Could I betray him? Could I? Could I? Is it I? We've been listening to Jesus speak tonight to us disciples around, around this table here. And I just don't get it. Words meant to comfort, but words met with misunderstanding and confusion. Talk of betrayal, but words met with incredulity and suspicion. Where is he going? There is so much left to do right here, right now, in this place. Sometimes I marvel that I, Thomas of all people, have seen him with my own eyes. I have touch my Lord and Master with my own hands. I have seen him do wonders, change lives. I don't want him to go away. Not now, not ever. And how are we supposed to follow him if he doesn't tell us where he's going? Is there something I have done or will do that will contribute to this betrayal that he talks about? Has he seen my lack of faith, my doubt, my fear? Oh, Lord. Jesus, is it I? I'm Judas Iscariot. I'm the treasurer for this group. I've followed Jesus. And I'm getting tired of his reluctance to take a stand against our oppressors. I believe he is who he says he is. But why would God send the Messiah for this? To wash feet and serve bread? I don't need a spiritual king. We need a political king. Someone to rise up and overthrow these Roman oppressors. Thousands of people follow him over mountainsides and across rivers to hear him speak. He could raise up an army in no time. Something must be done to force him to make his move, to lead us to freedom and victory to establish the new kingdom. A betrayer among us. Pfft. These men 
sit around this table wondering, accusing, suspecting each other? Why do they just sit here like sheep waiting for a shepherd? Someone has to do something. Well, I have. Tonight, the chief priests and the elders will help me help him usher in the promised kingdom. And history will thank me for this. Yes, someone has betrayed him. Perhaps we all will before this night is over. Master, is it I? Oh, oh, oh.
Tonight we've had a chance to uh, get a, a sneak peek into the hearts and minds of the disciples as they ask themselves, is it I who would betray the Lord and King? And maybe as you've had a chance to, to reflect on, on that same question this evening for yourself, uh, the answer for all of us is the same. Isaiah 53 Verse 6 says, We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us have turned to our own ways. And if we're honest with ourselves, there are, are things that we have done, there are things that, that we have said, or, or thoughts that we have thought that maybe we regret, that betray our hearts and show our true colors, that there is evil and sinfulness even within us. Sinfulness that that can't just be swept away or, or pretended like it's, it's non-existent, but sinfulness that God takes seriously. Jesus says in the Gospels that one of the, the main reasons that he came was to seek and to save those who are lost. See, the good news, friends, is that even though we, all like sheep, have gone astray, Jesus was not content to let us wander aimlessly as sheep without a shepherd, but instead he went after those who were lost to come and bring salvation to them and, and to come and bring redemption for those who are blind in their sin. It says in Romans chapter 5 that, that God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's one of the things that we celebrate during this weekend of Easter. So we have a, a great Messiah who has come, who loves you, who wants to have a relationship with you to restore you to a right place before God. And that this Messiah didn't just come to live, but he also came to die the death that, that you and I should have died. To pay the penalty that, that we deserve to pay. That in him we might have life to the full. And our prayer for you this Easter weekend is that that your hearts and minds would be directed to, to Jesus Christ. That you would know him as your Savior and Lord. That you would take the sinfulness that's in your life seriously, both in the things that you do or say or think. That you would recognize that that, that sin has been covered and atoned for through the work of Jesus Christ. And that you would put your trust and faith in him.